You're listening. You are singing. To That Gets My Goat. That Gets My Goat. <laughs> the only other thing that I wanted to say, because we've talked forever. I loved the movie and you loved the movie. And I think it sets a new benchmark for comic book movies. I mean, maybe it's not better than your favorite or mine in some aspects, but in other aspects, it's done something that nobody has ever done before. And that that makes it amazing. Going through and saying, I love Captain America. He's my Avenger. And walking out of the movie and saying, but I also love Hawkeye or I love Hulk or he's like, or somebody else like, yeah, oh yeah, well, what about, and he's like, yes, I love him kind of thing. It just, it made me a fan of all of these people whether I'd been a fan or not. And I, I imagine that there will be people that will go out and rent Thor that never saw Thor because Thor was so good in this movie or, or, or Incredible Hulk and, and all that just renewed interest in all these. Now Marvel is talking about doing an Incredible Hulk too. Whereas for years up until now, it's always been like, yeah, it's a shame we weren't able to do that. But now it's like, well, we're going to. And we, we always were going to, which is a lie. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody got their moment to shine. Nobody got underserved. Uh, Coulson was so cool in this movie. He and he got one of those things that Malcolm Reynolds would do, you know, uh, just a, oh, geez, it was so cool. And yeah, okay, that's the last thing that we do need to talk about is the other thing that Joss is famous for is he's famous for making you like a character and then killing them because it's a way to show that there's a cost. That there's a cost. That there's that a threat. On. That there's actually a chance that our guys will lose. Right. And the movie ended and you and I walked out of the theater and I was still high from the movie. And I said, you know, this may have been the, the best movie of the summer already. And summer just started. Uh, Dark Knight has got a huge way to go. To yeah, eclipse big this. hill to climb. But, yeah, but the, the thing that Dark Knight might do from seeing that trailer is show absolutely the pit of despair of how bad it can get and rise above that to, to triumphantly succeed when everything is against you. And that's what Joss does with just, you know, taking somebody that you love and killing them. And it's usually in a way that, I mean, that, it, that nobody else does that. Colson had a laugh when he died. Uh, Wash had a laugh when he died, you know, kind of thing. It's just, it puts your guard down and then punches you right there yeah. because he tricked you into lowering your guard. And he does, he finds, and you know, we were talking about that afterwards. He can't kill Captain America. He can't kill Thor. He can't kill any of these main characters. He can't even kill Samuel L. Jackson. He's not an important part, but he's too important to be killed. What is he going to kill? Maria Hill? Who's he going to? Well, he found somebody. And we talked about it. Yeah. Who's the expendable? Maria Hill and Coulson. Did we yeah. talk about that in the Some Assembly Required episode? Did we talk about so. will he kill Coulson? No, um, I don't think at all. We never considered that. And the weird thing is, he's somebody that I feel really bad. <laughs> when he, I really felt I, I like Coulson. And he had some great moments in this movie. Tons of them. And... He's been there all along. As soon as S.H.I.E.L.D. was introduced, it was Coulson. He was the first thing. He basically was S.H.I.E.L.D. for several movies before anything else happened. And it was such a heartbreak to see him go. It's just weird because I didn't think that I cared. I had no idea that I cared that much. And when he died, I was just like, no, crap. I was sure that he was going to be okay. He's still there. He's still breathing. He's oh, he's no way. They're gonna get the medics and ah, oh, I I just couldn't believe it. I don't know. It, it it blew me away. Well, I think we also saw a different side to Coulson in this one than we did in the others. With like the I I, I watched you as you slept and <laughs> and it's a mint set and there's a little yeah. boxing of the edges or whatever. It's just like it humanized him. And I, I, had we gotten any human side to him in the other movies? I mean, the only thing I can think of is in Thor where he's like, oh, it must yeah, be oh, another one of Starks. You know, they never tell me anything and all that. But I don't know. I made a connection with that guy that besides the uniform, he was a man. And yeah. And they started that off early when he comes in. You know, that when he calls Black Widow, who's in the middle of an interrogation, and she's like, okay, hold on a minute. And 
<laughs> she starts kicking everybody's ass and then it cuts away and you see him standing there with the phone just, just waiting. kind of waiting <laughs> just in, uh, and and then when he goes to bring tony to the team and he comes in and pepper's <laughs> friends with him knows who he's dating all this stuff and that was the huge i mean that was the turning point for tony stark where he became not just a prima donna that's here to, you know, have fun and mess with everybody and jerk around and see if he can get the Hulk to turn into the Hulk. Joined the team and really went for it is when he found out what, you know, Phil, uh, you know, he sacrificed himself and he died for this. I don't know. Just good stuff. Uh, shoot. Boy, this is just hours and hours of talking about how great Joss <laughs> Whedon is. And I, I don't care because there are podcasts that every week they do this uh -huh. that are just for him. He's not afraid to make his good guys gray, too. And the stuff with the cards, with the blood on him or whatever, and that Nick Fury used that. He essentially tricked his guys into doing what he wanted to do. You know, it's just that he used Coulson's death as a stepping stone. And, and, and you know, Tony has always been a really flawed hero. But he was the most heroic we've ever seen him in this. Yeah, he was gung-ho from then on. To, where he's willing to die to save the city and, and everybody else. Just that stuff is awesome. And I don't know. A lot of guys wouldn't want to do that. I, th I, I'm try I, I said that everybody had an arc. I, maybe Steve didn't because he's always at the top of his game. He's always good. You know, even at the moment when Coulson died, you know, he hadn't done anything wrong, really. Captain America did so. so maybe that's that's a hard one to Well he did to, get into mistrusting the people who were pointing him at where to go and he'd gone and found those weapons and That's that's a good point. He, he started to question orders and kind of thing and that, I don't know if that counts but it's something. One of the reasons that everybody says Batman is better than Superman is because, you know, the the shades of gray and Joss always has his characters do things that are not heroic cuz everybody is not one thing. I mean, he's had Buffy screw up so bad and, and make the dumb decisions and things that the heroes don't do because first and foremost, she's a person, not a, a hero. You know what I mean? And and, and that's something that I, I hope that continues. And uh, Buffy's been canceled, man. Yeah, Buffy is over. I'm very sorry. <laughs> it's not going to continue. <laughs> I praise him. And and the powers that be, you know, whoever paid his salary, who hired him and let him do his thing for not questioning that. And you know what? Maybe he had to fight for every single one of these things. It's like, ooh, the S.H.I.E.L.D. is making weapons of mass destruction out of the Tesseract. No, we, we, we want him to be the yeah, – and he fought for it. And I commend them for letting him do all that stuff because sometimes bad guys do good things. And sometimes good guys do bad things, but they're still good guys. I, I, I don't know. Really, how many times have you seen an action movie where the bad guy's about to fall off a cliff or a building or whatever, and the hero reaches to save them, and then the bad guy does one last double cross or whatever, so that the hero has an excuse to let them die? I've seen that a hundred times. Times. Yeah. I never want to see it again. <laughs> it's just a silly shortcut so that there's no blood on the hero's hands. And it, it's it's a cliche, but it's, just, you know, heroes do bad things. Malcolm Reynolds stabbing that guy when he's down on the ground twice <laughs> just to make a point or right, kicking that guy right. into the propeller or whatever. Things like that. But leaving those poor bastards to get eaten alive by the Reavers are all awful things but he's still a hero he's still a good man who struggles with a dark side i don't know i just i hope that uh, that it's not 10 years from now we're still talking about the first avengers movie the good avengers <laughs> yeah movie. i hope that's not the case because it, as long as they keep joss on board i don't think we'll have to uh, worry so much about that i, I hear you and he, you know what joss is not a god He's not infallible. And, and, you know, he may have had bad ideas that, that somebody called him on. Oh, I'm sure or that's the case. Surely he had bad ideas that he caught and fixed before they made it to the film. Mm -hmm. But he was the man for the job. And it's just the beginning of the summer. And something tells me at the end of the summer, 
we'll still be talking about that part where Thor came walking up next to the Hulk and give him a nod because we're on the same side and, and Hulk just punches <laughs> Thor for no reason at all. We'll still be talking about that. Yeah. Or the part where uh, Thor says, oh, but Loki is one of us. He's an Asgardian. He must be taken home. He is my brother after all. <laughs> he killed over 200 people. Uh, he was adopted. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there were so many great bits and that makes me glad that it, it exists. And wow, that's the best thing that can yeah. be said about entertainment. You know, it's just, like, wow, I'm a happier person because this exists. Yeah, I remember way back when they first started talking about making the Avengers. Wasn't it 2008 that the first Iron Man came out? It was. And we were just like, oh yeah, and this is scheduled for this. And then 2011 is Captain America and Thor and then... Avengers will be 2012, and I just thought, 2012? Actually, Avengers was supposed to come out last year. It, oh, okay. it got bumped when All the same, John Favreau left. I was just like, I'm going to be long dead by the time <laughs> this freaking movie finally comes out. Holy crap. Yeah, and it turns out you're only mostly yeah. dead. I've been mostly dead all day. And it's, yeah, it's here, and it's just like cool that that finally came, and it turned out to be worth the wait. You know, it's one thing to wait and then finally they make a G.I. Joe movie and you're like, eh, take it or leave it really. It was all right. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. But yeah, this one is just like, oh, yes, I'm going to go see it again. <laughs> you're not the first person that I've talked to that's seen it twice already. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. There was a girl that said she had seen it three times before I went to it yesterday. And I, again, it's like, why am I not dating these girls? But <laughs> there are disparate people that it affected in the same way. And, and, and maybe we should talk about events and things like that. And just, you know, how Star Wars was such an event for an entire generation of children. And, and I would assume adults, but, you know, I was so little. I've never spoken to somebody that was an adult when Star Wars came out because, you know, it'd be 50 now. <laughs> and I so it's to just... some of my older brothers and sisters. We ought to uh, converse with them about I'd that like sometime. I'd like to. Because that's, that's about how old they are. That's something that I really enjoyed when I worked in L.A. is a, there was a co-worker who was about a dozen years older than me. And he would tell me about things in the 70s. And he would tell me about, you know, when this happened and, you know, what the reaction was. And that was a new perspective. That was really cool. And so... Uh, I don't know. Maybe we should talk about that in our next episode. What do you say? I suppose. Oh, well, maybe I'll, I'll take maybe the I'll ball. twist your Maybe I'll take the ball and run with it. <laughs> all right. Okay, it's all you. Thank you for joining us. I've been Rich Outfield. And I'm Mick Anglewitch. See you later, folks. Good night. There's one last thing I wanted to talk about, but maybe it can wait. Uh, that thing that I said in the parking lot about being an arrogant writer and seeing movies and saying, I wish, you know, oh God, why did they not do this? You know, it, it croaks, things like that. Uh, <laughs> and just being in awe that I couldn't have done this. I couldn't have pulled this off. Maybe it's not necessary. It's just that so many times, and you know what? I think I consider myself a pretty good story writer but a hell of a screenwriter. And, and it sucks that I don't screenwrite anymore. But you know what I mean? There was no competition. And in LA, everybody says that they have a screenplay in their head or whatever, but nobody has actually written a screenplay because it's hard. And I would be like, well, I've, I've written six screenplays. Never seen a girl's boobs, but you know, that kind of thing. And that was what, something that I took pride in that I did really well. And I, I don't, I couldn't do that. I think I could write a hell of a Spider-Man movie. I think I, a great Spider-Man movie, better than we have seen. But I couldn't write something like The Avengers. I guess I would say, okay, well, who is my character? Who is my Avenger? Okay, it's all going to be about Captain America being stuck out of time or whatever and trying to, to show these other heroes that he still has merit even though he can't make lightning come and, and he can't fly and he doesn't have boobs. But He's yeah. got kind of manly pecs, though. I mean, that's something. Uh, it's not the same. Pretty big. We talk about writing all the time. Maybe the next time we talk about writing, I'll talk about that. Or okay. fudge it. I'll just put this part in the outtakes. Okay.